I was born in Pakistan and I grew up as a Muslim and all my life I, I was taught to follow Allah and Muhammad is the final prophet uh, of Islam and uh, I was taught that uh, and I believed that uh, there was four books that came from heaven but the final book was the Quran and it was the final revelation and so I used to go to study the Quran after school for three to four hours at a time every single day because uh, my family wanted me to be ingrained with the, with, with the truth of, of what I believed and the one thing I remember as a Muslim was that I was always opposed or, or brought up to oppose the deity of who Jesus is. The Quran talked about Jesus but we could never call him the Son of God. Uh, that was blasphemy. In fact that was the greatest sin that any Muslim could ever commit was to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. I wanted to have a higher education in my life and uh, I left the country for the purposes of education and then later I got involved in business and in business some of the people I was connecting with and working with many of them uh, were Christians or they believed that Jesus was the Son of God now this I did not like because as a Muslim this was an open confrontation because I thought that they were deceived and that the Bible was inaccurate that it was changed and I remember telling them that that the Bible's changed it's inaccurate that it, it's not correct and that you should not call Jesus as God's son and that's blasphemy uh, I was invited to uh, first I was invited to a church and I said no I don't go to church I'm a Muslim don't invite me to church but you can come to a mosque if you like I said to them so then later they invited me uh, some Christian businessmen invited me to a business conference where there was successful people in business training on how to be successful in business so I knew that I wanted education I wanted to learn how to be successful that's why I, I, I was getting more education and so I went to this conference and there was a probably 20,000 people in this auditorium and on the Sunday morning they stopped the conference and they had this service they, they, they called it a Christian service which I thought that only occurred in a church or a building uh, so here was something that they were going to do that I didn't want to go to but someone said to me if you come to this service you can have a front row seat and as you sit in the front row after this conference is over you can keep your seat for the remainder of this business conference so that was a good good idea because I was going to be there secondly they said whoever's going to be speaking is a businessman he's not a priest uh, he's not some kind of uh, uh, religious leader he's just a businessman and I thought as a Muslim well how bad can that be to hear a businessman so I went there to get my front row seat and this man got up and the first thing he said was Jesus is the Son of God now that offended me as a Muslim I got angry and then he said there's no name given by which you must be saved except the name of Jesus and he said if you reject Jesus he goes you will go to hell and I did not like that at all but he said one other thing he said but if you receive Jesus then you are guaranteed to go to heaven and spend eternity with Jesus. Now that made me mad too. And that was the beginning of me hearing about Jesus and how they were very bold about him. There was a boldness about this Jesus. But I thought the man speaking was deceived. And I said, it's my responsibility as a Muslim to go speak to him and correct him because I thought he was wrong. And so he did this invitation for people out of the audience to come to the front by the stage and, and, and he basically was inviting them to, to come to Jesus. I didn't quite understand, but when he gave the invitation, I got up and I ran and I was one of the first people there because I thought I could talk to the man now. But by the time I got to the front of this stage, I noticed hundreds of people started to come out of the aisles and they began to run to the front. And so when I got to the front, I got stuck to the front of the stage and all these people were there. It was literally about three to 5,000 people. And I didn't know what to do. I thought maybe I should leave, but I couldn't. I got stuck. And I remember the businessman, he had tears in his eyes, and he was looking at everybody, and he said, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And he started his prayer by saying, Jesus is the Son of God. And I said, no, I can't say that. I'm a Muslim. So I said, my kalma. I said, if they're going to say something like that, I'm going to say my kalma, which is the statement of faith of a Muslim. And I said that and I left there 
and two of uh, my Christian friends came to me and they wanted to give me a hug and they said congratulations and I said what for and they said well you went to receive and become a Christian I said no don't you ever call me a Christian I'm a Muslim and I remember saying to them I said the mountains can shake the earth can move but there's nothing on this earth that can make me say that Jesus is the Son of God. But then I went back to another conference and I went to spy and to see how they do it. And I remember they were doing and talking about how Jesus is the Son of God. How anyone who believes upon Jesus or even calls upon His name will become a son or a daughter or a child of God. They would receive the right to become children of God. I remember they were talking about that. Then at the end, this businessman asked all the people in the audience to stand up, about 20,000. So out of courtesy, I stood up as well. And I knew now that he was about to give this invitation to the front like they normally do. And I knew I did not need to respond because now I knew what it meant. So while I stood there and he began to invite people to this front, suddenly, the living God showed up. And when God came, I knew with every fiber of my being, my very spirit, my soul, my very body, that I was standing before the Most High God. And His presence stood right before me, went right through me, encircled me. I, was, I felt ambushed and I was alone with God. I had so many questions in my mind. I didn't understand what's going on. Why is God manifesting Himself? What's happening? I never experienced the majesty of God, but I knew that I was standing before Him. And I asked Him one question, and I said, I said, God, as loud as I could from my heart, I said, God, what are you doing here? I thought, these are the bad guys. What I meant was, why would God manifest amongst a people that are blaspheming in my thought by worshiping Jesus as the Son of God. So when I was before him, I heard a voice. It was an audible voice. And I heard this voice say to me, No, these are my children. And he said it again, No, these are my children. And a third time, No, these are my children. When he said that, it was as if a veil or something fell from my eyes. Now I knew with every fiber of my being that Jesus is the Son of God. It was a revelation. I didn't just believe it, I knew it. And now I had to respond. And I walked to the front and I confessed with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that He truly was born of a virgin and that He shed His blood and He did die on a cross. And I confessed that I, God raised him from the dead the third day. And I remember saying, I said, Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you take away my stony heart? Would you give me a new heart that I might love the Father as you? And so in this revelation, I knew in my heart, the deepest part of me, the core of my being already knew by revelation that Jesus is the Son of God. Now in my mind, I didn't understand that part. I didn't understand how could this be because my mind was trained to oppose that. I didn't have the understanding yet, but I had the revelation. After I, I came to the realization of who Jesus is, I had a hunger and a desire to know Him and understand what I knew in my heart to be true. So I got a hold of a Bible. Someone gave me a Bible. So I began to read this word and I, I would open it and I would read it you know, as much as I could every day and then I put it down or I might get tired or I'd go to sleep. But one morning, uh, the Holy Spirit came into the place that I was and this river of God began to flow from the top of my head to the soles of my feet for three hours. And I heard a voice and I heard words I never heard all my life as a Muslim. And this is what I heard. I heard the Father speak to me and He said, I love you, son. I love you, son. And He said it a third time. I love you, son. I never heard those words as a Muslim. And I, all I wanted to ever be was a servant. But here was God saying, son. And when I got up from that floor about 10.30, I picked up the Bible. And when I opened it up and I'd look at the page, 
literally one page or passage at a time would leap off the page, go into my heart and explode. And I had understanding in my mind. Now I understood the very word I wanted to know, that I could learn more about Jesus and about God. And these scriptures began to be written on my heart. And for 36 hours, I did not put that Bible down. I did not eat. I did not drink. But for 36 hours, I read through the whole Bible. It was fast. I looked at the page. It would jump into my heart. I began to have understanding. And I realized that the Spirit of God, who is the author of this book, began to write this word on the very tables of my heart. And that began, that's when I really began to see a change in me. From that moment, I had a certain change, I had an understanding. It was as if prior to that, I would be drowning in water in my new Christian life. I didn't understand, I'd come up for a breath, and then I'd feel like I'm drowning again because the circumstances, the challenges. But then, at this very moment, when I had this revelation, and I began to understand the scriptures, I began to, as if symbolically speak, walk on the water. And that's when life began to change, and every person I came in contact with in my life, they came to Jesus.